This is Amara Station, and my parents and I are about to ride the entire San Sebastian Metro. We'll get into it, it's kind of a metro, kind of isn't, and it goes to France, so that's kind of cool. The station has a cafe, a departure board, some history, and some ticket machines. Also, we're in Basque country, so it defaults to Basque, which is the strangest language in Europe, so let's just switch that to English here. Five hours later. This is a nice station. It was 275 each to go from here to France, which is pretty <laughs> impressive. I mean, to France, I'm <laughs> yeah. France isn't that far for what it's worth, but that's still pretty cool. We have to deviate for a while first to do the other legs of the metro. So it'll be a little while before we get to France, but we have to keep the tension up of like, what will France be like? Will it be completely different from this? Like, there'll be rues instead of calles. Exactly. Plus, there's a ferry ride in the future, too. That's true. So this is debatably not a metro because it uses the same trains and ticket system as, like, the whole Yusko trend system, which kind of goes all around Basque Country. But, like, this is, according to Wikipedia, a metro. I've heard some people call it topo. I don't really know. It's every 15 minutes on weekdays, but it's a weekend, so it's every 30 minutes. Muy hermosa. It's worth noting that uh, trains go both ways out of here, but the station is obviously a stub, so they have to come in and then back out and go the other way. This is really nice for a subway train. It's fully walked through. They have these nice screens to tell you where we are. Do you want me to take the camera and do the a shot going all the way down to the end? This is our first stop, Blue Garitz, which is mostly underground, but it's kind of at the entrance of the tunnel. The line's kind of a hybrid. There are some stations that are fully underground, some that are all above ground, and some that are sort of in the middle, I guess, like that one. A lot of the undergroundedness of this line is because of the mountains. There's just a lot of mountains around San Sebastian. Insert photo that we took from the mountains so they can oh, see, good right? One. A Yorga, which is at these big apartment buildings. Marengo, Geltokia, Proxima Estacion, Road chain, Arret, next station, quadlingual announcements. Nice. That was a bloodbath. Road chain. Pocha Arret. <laughs> We're splitting off from the main line here. That goes to Bilbao, and I think we're almost to our last stop. There's a massive mall here. A lot of people have stayed on to the last stop here, which is La Sarte. You can take a brief look at the platform. I'm in people's way. Yeah, so pretty big town here. I guess that makes sense. It would be a big transit destination. It just occurred to me, you know how a ton of people got off here? Let's see. This runs every half hour. What the heck? Run it more frequently. Every 15 minutes, like on weekdays. Okay, I will. So now you're sitting forwards and we're sitting backwards. We made it back to Amara. Now, plot twist, you're gonna go backwards and we're gonna go forwards again. Because we reverse out of here. By 2025, they want to build a tunnel beneath San Sebastian so the trains don't have to sit here for a while. They can just kind of go underground through the city, serving more of it, and then continue out the other end. I saw went to that tunnel and now we're taking a totally new route. Something interesting, on the other branch, trains ran on the left, but here we're running on the right. So I wonder if that has something to do with facilitating transit through Amara easier with the whole reversing thing. This just feels like a metro station and a ton of people getting on. Again, this needs to run more often than every half hour on weekends. It's clearly got the ridership for more frequent service. I told you I was gonna do it. This is Loyola, which is a really nice elevated station. All right, that's a Basque name that I'm not sure how to pronounce, but this is another gorgeous underground station. In Charondo. Ooh, that was pretty good. Thank you. So we're here at Herrera, we're gonna wait here for seven minutes and then there's the E5, which is basically just a one-stop thing. Like it, it starts at Amara, but it's only unique bit is one stop, but in order to complete the Metro, we have to take that. This is a beautiful system, Miles. And you know, Dad and I were just noticing there's no third rail. Right, there it's overhead power. Top, so nobody's gonna die if they get pushed off. They will die if they fly up there, but right. I don't think that's... Very likely it's, to happen. It's hard. There are even these markers that tell you where the doors are. I guess I'm not surprised it's so empty. It's only like one extra stop. Well, that was a fun one stop ride. I'm all underground. Here's the station. And uh, now we head back. I just want to explain why I've been so quiet on these videos. It's because I got a book here of words and I'm just trying to learn as many Spanish words as possible. So I started at A, B, C, I'm up to D now. Uh, but there's one other thing I wanted to say about Amara. Amara, Amara, 
I love you, Amara. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> We're leaving Arrero. We're gonna take this one additional stop to change over just to get a unique stop. Wow. This is a monument to transportation. We must be pretty deep underground because it's kind of cold here. Freezing cold. Hace frío. Hace frío. I do feel like it was an odd design decision to have metal benches because this thing's very cold. Mi culo es frío. Are we allowed to say that? No. I don't know if I'm used to the very wide Iberian gauge or what, but the tracks seem very narrow. Ooh, it's busy. How many people are getting off here at uh, Hasea? Hasea. Hasea. Which is elevated in the middle of this really nice town. This line seems to have a lot of single track portions and just kind of run really tightly through these really dense areas. But despite the single track, you can still run every 15 minutes on weekdays. I know. I love how close we are all to all these cities. Mom, do you want to try to pronounce this one? What is it? Gaines Laris. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Something like that. I don't know what this station is, but it feels very temporary. Maybe they're building a new one somewhere. There's a lot of people getting on here in Irun. I think because people just want to go to France. That's like soon after. Okay, we're officially crossing into France. Wow. And what's the name of this river? I have no idea. This must be the border, this little side. We're officially in France, guys. How does it feel? Muy oh. bien. Uh, bon. Très bien. Très bien. Très bien. It feels good. We're going to talk like this now. Cool. Cool. People watching you. Alright. Wow, I thought that it would just be kind of an easy crossing in, but they have police. They lock you at the door and they check your passports or IDs or whatever. Not expecting that. So this is Hendaya. Okay, it's etymology seems to be Basque, so my best guess is on day. And we are now in France, and we also finished the San Sebastian Metro. Woo! This is the main station, or Gare. Um, there are trains to Paris from here, which is really cool. This is the bathroom at Hendaya Station. Very wet. We've been walking a bit in France here and we found a pizza vending machine. Wow. We're still in Basque country, so we've got a street sign in both French and Basque. We're at the sandwich place. It's just so weird to be, everybody's speaking French. It's, everything's different. And all we did was take one little subway rides, one metro ride. It's just so weird. My mind is completely blown. Mm. Oh, it's good. Looks like we picked a good day to come to this plage, huh? Yes, this plage is very lively. Now that's a plage. That's Spain. It's so close. Well, we want to take the ferry to, uh, on the... Pronouncenames.com Which is the Spanish town over there. Um, but uh, we have to find where it is. No, it's not the ferry station. He said it's maybe 20 meters that way. I have no idea. Is it just this little boat? It's a pretty unofficial operation, huh? <laughs> we're off. No idea if we're on time or not. Uh, <laughs> it's two euros per person. I don't know, this is fun. It is kind of cool. We've moved outside. There's a very small wall preventing us from falling in, so don't lean too far back. <laughs> Change. 
must right. include it. Because <laughs> if the boat capsizes, you don't have to pay. Well, that was fun. That was fun. He gave you tickets? Yeah. Do you need one? I mean, I guess. Hey, Louise. <laughs> All right, well, we're back in Spain, so no more France. Metro. This is a walled city. We're entering the walled bit. We're on the express bus back from... Andaribia. Any parting thoughts, guys? It was cool to be in a medieval city that was walled, and there were jugglers and people doing Vikings attacking, and so it was great. We stumbled onto this and had to be here, and guess what? We won the golden ticket to the fair. Time to go home, though. Bonus funicular ride. Here's some history that explains what's going on. So this is the oldest funicular in Basque Country. Third oldest in Spain. It's the uh, funicular Monte Igueldo. This is the third oldest in Spain. The two oldest are the ones we already did in Barcelona. So we're really just like getting funicular history in Spain here. We're getting funiculared up. <laughs> like the tip of the funicular, this one goes up to a fun fair. So. Oh, the crack of the clothes. What? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, okay, we'll be a good view. I do like how there's a one-way fare, and this is also much cheaper than the Tibidabo one. So this is our ticket. I think he's just gonna like rip a piece off of it to say that we've been accepted. We agree this is definitely kind of touristy. Very touristy. Should we grab the back here? Like you actually just can't see anything now, it's just sort of shrouded by trees. Oh wow. I'll oh, be able to be even nicer if we climb up. The map of everything that's closed. So tea.